In this video, we're going to build a very simple turntable. We're going to design a single piece that'll fit on a stepper motor using CAD modeling. We'll 3D print it and assemble electronic hardware, write firmware using Arduino that will allow us to control it using a web browser. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 27,000 classes in design, business, web programming, and other categories. In a few of my videos, you've seen me use JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and other web design technologies that you can easily learn using Skillshare. The first 500 of my subscribers can use the link in the description and get a two month free subscription to try things out. We'll start by downloading the GitHub repository for this tutorial series. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I'll make a copy of the web server HTTP upload code sample onto my desktop and I'll rename it as web server websockets turntable. I'll open up the file and put in my SSID and password. For this video, I'm going to be using the Wemos D1 development board for the ESP8266. It has the same four factor as the Arduino Uno, so I can use a standard motor shield. I'll use a NEMA 17 stepper motor and I'll wire everything together with jumper wires. I've pre-soldered some standard leads to the stepper motor to make the connections a little bit easier. I also use the male leads of the wires to go directly into the screw terminals so that way I don't have to strip the wires and I'm able to reuse them later. I'll power things up with my benchtop power supply set to 6 volts and after making sure that we've installed the USB drivers as we've done in other videos, I'll go ahead and connect it to USB, select the correct board and the correct port from the tools menu, upload the code, and then I'm ready to upload files into the ESP8266. If this is not clear, you can watch the video where we build this code as linked in the description. The file we want to upload is an index file that we can serve to clients making requests to change the speed of the turntable. For that, I'm going to be using WebSockets. So I'm going to open up the web server WebSockets file that we built in another video. I'm going to search for the web page that we built, copy all the HTML and JavaScript that's in that web page, and port it over to a new file. As we're going to be making changes in speed rather than brightness, I'll go ahead and make a few changes. The range of speeds of the turntable will be between negative 100 and 100, and it will call a function that I'll name sendSpeed when it's actuated. I'll make sure that the JavaScript matches these changes, get rid of things that I do not need, go back to the Arduino IDE, get the IP address of the ESP8266, and using the terminal and the command line utility curl, I'll go ahead and upload the file onto flash memory. We covered this in the HTTP upload video, so you're welcome to watch it for a refresher. We get a success message, so now if we visit the IP address, we get the dial controlling the speed from negative 100 to 100 that we're going to need. For actually controlling the motor, we'll need to install a few libraries. The first is the WebSockets library that will allow us to handle the request issued through the browser. We'll also need the Adafruit Motor Shield library and because of the hardware we're using, I found that it's easiest to install the modified Adafruit version of the Axle Stepper library. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Remember to rename the directory, copy it into your Arduino libraries directory in your computer, and restart the IDE to make sure it recognizes this new library. Now we can include 
all the header files of the libraries we just installed. We'll instantiate a WebSocket server object that will allow us to get the request that will be issued by the browser. We'll initialize it in the setup function and we'll make it call a WebSocket event function whenever a message is sent through that WebSocket. Because of the function's prototype, it takes a few arguments. We'll use the type argument in order to determine what type of message it is, and if it's of type text, we'll parse it looking for it to start with a numeral. This is the way we designed it in another video so that we could recognize the messages that we care about. Once we get a speed value, we'll turn it into an actual number. And then, just for now, to debug and make sure everything is working, we'll print it out to the serial monitor. We'll remember to call the loop method inside the loop function, and for testing purposes, we can upload the code. If we go to the browser, refresh the page, and move the little slider, we can see that speed values are being sent to the server via a WebSocket. Now, for actually turning the motor, we'll use the motor shield and the axle stepper class. We need to create an instance of the motor shield class, and then we can call the getStepper method because that's the type of motor that we'll be using. The library supports using DC motors and even servos. Once we have the stepper motor, we can create two functions that we'll need in order to use the axle stepper library. I'll arbitrarily name them forward step one and backward step one, and I'll use the one step method of the stepper class. I'll pass those two functions to the instance of the axle stepper class that I'm going to be using to control the motor. I'll need to initialize the Adafruit motor shield class as well as set the speed to zero using the axle stepper object. Now, in addition to printing out the speed value to the serial monitor, I'll call the setSpeed method inside the WebSocket event function, setting the speed to the value we want. The last thing I'll need is to call the run speed function continuously inside the loop function. Before trying things out, we can quickly glance over the design of the turntable. Again, it's just a single piece consisting of a cylinder joined with a little attachment that will allow me to slide it onto the shaft of the stepper motor. Once I'm done, I can send it to my 3D print utility and print it out using my MakerBot Mini. I'll use double-sided sticky tape underneath the motor so that it doesn't slide around. I'll pop in the little turntable and I'll add a little Lego figure so that we have something to look at. I'll go ahead and upload the code and if I refresh the page, I can use the slider to control the speed in one direction of the stepper motor, switch directions and then stop it all together. And there you have it. We've built a very simple turntable that we can control over Wi-Fi using a web browser and web sockets. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.